Hello again, everyone. Uh, my name is Yehezkel Bernat. And I, uh, you already noticed that I don't speak as nearly as fast as Amir, uh, even in Hebrew. Uh, so it's not a. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Microsoft and also a teaching assistant in a Hadassah College, Jerusalem, a teaching object oriented programming course where we use C to teach obviously object oriented programming, but uh, also generic programming. It's not uh, the title uh, is shorter, but uh, I already seven years there. And my, my theme in this presentation is also very different from uh, what uh, Amir decided eventually to, to, <laughs> to do. Uh, so we, we will see uh, some selected features from C++ 17 and the planned features for C++ 20. Uh, I, I am focusing mainly on language features there are some, maybe we will see some of the new additions to the library, but uh, I think the language features, uh, the language changes are much more important to understand. And, and one, one other thing, uh, Niels Bohr said, that it's hard to make predictions, especially about the future. So C++ 20 is still uh, not final, and things ca can change some things. Some of the things we know that they are probably going to be changed. Uh, so take it with a big uh, grain of salt. Uh, OK, so uh, I, I, I have here a list of the references and credits, uh, especially thanks for Tony Van Eld for, from, for allowing me to use the, his Tony tables. Uh, as a, this is a, a practic uh, named after him because he used it first to compare how cre uh, uh, the same uh, comp comparison we will see in the, in the presentation in many cases. And, okay. So, some fundamental language changes in C17. First, guaranteed copy elision uh, mentioned by Amir already. So, the, the main change uh, from, from uh, this guarantee in the standard is that now we can return something that it isn't copyable and isn't movable. Take this struct, for example. Uh, we delete the copy constructor explicitly. The move constructor is also deleted implicitly by, by the new, by the language rules since C++ 11. And still, we can use a make function to return it. Because it's not really a return. It's the, uh, now PR value is expression used for initialization. So this is ju just like a, an initialization expression, not a real object. So we can return it this way. Uh, Okay, next, uh, next topic. What do, you, do you see any issue with this code? We take a string, we replace the first, most of the uh, letters from the first word with I, we replace the, the, the second word with C++, and we assume this assert should hold. What's the issue? Okay, the name of the <laughs> of the feature, the language change, uh, tell it. 
with a Microsoft compiler in C14 mode, the, this is the result. Because no one guaranteed where, uh, when find will be evaluated. The compiler was free before C17 to decide that uh, find is better to, to be called first. And the location of, this, uh, of, of the second word has changed uh, till we reach the actual replace. So this is the result. And with the interesting point about this, uh, about this uh, example is that it based on a, a, a longer example uh, published in the, the C++ programming language uh, book by Björn Stostrup himself. So he wrote it. He gave it to multiple uh, uh, reviewers to review it. And it, re uh, it was published like this, and no one not noticed the, the bug here. So this was the, the final push to uh, add some uh, guarantees into the language. What is the order of the evaluation of many things? So, uh, for example, when, when we use the dot operator, error, or subscript, uh, E1 expression 1 is evaluated first. And when we have a function call or something that, that looks like function call, it can be an overloaded op, uh, call operator. And this is then the nicest thing about it, because uh, now we get the same guarantee for our own operators. And again, there is an order, but it still not, doesn't guarantee what order the, the action. If we have a function with multiple uh, arguments, the order of evaluation of each uh, uh, of the various arguments is not guaranteed. It can be from right to left, from left to right, from the middle to outside. It doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, the only guarantee is that each one is fully evaluated before we uh, handle the, the other one. Uh, other things, maybe we never had a second thought about it. But uh, it, it was never guaranteed that f will be evaluated before g. So if there is uh, uh, any dependence be between them, uh, now it's fixed. OK. Uh, uh, OK, uh, maybe it's interesting to note that uh, now it's fine to overload comma operator, because the issue with, with uh, the issue was about uh, the sequencing, and, but what for? OK, C++ 20, fundamental language change. The, there are much more changes in, uh, that can be considered uh, fundamental. And some uh, uh, says that C++ 20 is a bigger change even than C++11, because ma many new things, and some of them have, are very big. So first, modules. Modules, it changed uh, from using in hash include to use import. And this change is not just a syntax, of course. It, it doesn't use the preprocessor anymore. It's part of the compiler. It's part of the language. And uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the one of the changes is that now we have uh, mu much more control of what uh, on what is exported from the module. And uh, okay, many other things that you can read later, and uh, I don't have the time to talk about. And the, there is a many questions on how the actual implementation will look like, what, uh, what interaction will be between the build system and the compiler, 
Will, be, will the compiler must be a build system for, implement, for implementing modules? Because with, with hash include, it's very clear how the preprocessor finds the, the header file. Because the name of the header file is right there. But with modules, the, the name of the file is not, is not written there. And anyway, I hope the keynote we will see later will answer at least some of the, these questions. And here's the general syntax for it. So we, said, uh, we say export module A. It means this is, this is like our, uh, the header file. It's not called header file anymore. It's called module interface. But, uh, and it, it means uh, and it, there must be only one like this, only one file that you, uh, exports the, the module. And then everything we write is part of the module, but only things that we explicitly, explicitly export are exported. It's not like things that we had to put in the header file and then uh, they affect uh, other, other codes that uh, include it. And the implementation of the module, it could be uh, uh, in the same file, but if we still want to separate it to a separated file, like, uh, like, like we, use with, uh, we used to do with headers and uh, code, so we can uh, mention again module A, so all this uh, file is part of the module. Uh, by the way, it must be the first line of code. We can put uh, many blank lines and uh, comments, but the first line of code, so maybe it, it will make it easier for compilers to implement. And then we can implement uh, the functions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and of course, it can use the, all the things that were uh, defined in, in the expo, in the interface, and the user code use import A, and then the, this code can call bar because it's exported, but foo is a compilation error. It, it isn't vis visible there. Ranges. Uh, okay, ranges, uh, ranges is a big, uh, a big change in the library. So I mentioned the language, but this is actually the, the library. Some call it STL2 because it changed all, all, all the way uh, we use uh, algorithms. And the first change is very simple. Now we have the same algorithms and instead, instead of taking a pair of uh, iterators, begin and end, they take the container directly. But it's not only a container, it can be any range. What is the range? The range is formed by two iterators. But now the iterators are bundled together, so maybe it's easier to reason about them. But it can be also an iterator and sentinel. Okay, I don't have a good example for it, so <laughs> let's not dive into it. And the most interesting uh, part of it is what we will see in, the, uh, in a minute in the next slide. Uh, okay, Dvir had a talk about it, but he, he focused on the, uh, mainly on the first part of, uh, of this uh, change. So just a list of all the algorithms. And Here's a, a problem we want to solve. How we print the, uh, we, with Roman numbers, all the, uh, the last three numbers div divisible by seven in the range. Uh, okay, it's the, the, even in words, this uh, problem statement is uh, too long. And we can assume that the code will be a bit complicated too. So we can count starting from 200 because we want it uh, to be in reverse order and count the, the variable count 
uh, it tracks how many numbers we already print, uh, found. Uh, found. And here is the, uh, and we we stop if we uh, if we found if we found three, or we re reach uh, the lower bound, and we check if it's um, uh, modulo seven, uh, it's zero, and finally we can print it, and don't forget to increase the count, but. Here is how it should look with ranges. And RS here is a, uh, just a, a namespace alias for uh, std range. And IOTA is a function that generates a sequence of numbers. And then we can pipe it if we, uh, for the Unix or Linux users, this uh, looks very familiar and very natural. So we have it now uh, with ranges. So we ask it to be reversed. We filter it with the filter we give it and ask to transform it from a number to Roman numbers and to, uh, limit it to just three or of this uh, sequence. All this can go into a range-based for loop because it's range, of course, and we print it. So I think this is a bit long, but still much more readable for this, or readable uh, even by itself. And the, the, uh, one of the interesting points here is that we don't, uh, it's, not, uh, it's as efficient as this one because uh, we, uh, this is a view and the, the point about view is that it fetches the, the, uh, the next element only when we ask for it. So it's more like an iterator so, uh, and everything is lazily evaluated. So the actual evaluation happens only here when we iterate, about, uh, iterate over it. And concepts, concepts is, is a way to constrain uh, our templates and will be discussed later. Uh, because I want to put it in a context of more changes that happen to templates. And coatings, I will not talk about coatings again. I had a talk about it yesterday, so take your time machine and go back to see it, or uh, catch it on YouTube later. Uh, but uh, in a nutshell, if you know async await from other languages that uh, I will not mention the, the name, uh, or yield, so it allows these use cases and much more. Uh, it may, uh, we have now three new operators, co-await, co-yield, co-return. By the way, this is a theme in C++20. We have coroutines with co-await, co-yield, co-return. We have concepts. We have contracts, so co, co. So it's probably a reserved prefix now. I don't know. <laughs> and so task generator state machine uh, uh, some of the popular usages. And one important point that uh, I want uh, all of us as teachers to note that, uh, um, no, uh, it's this one, that uh, Okay, but the, fir the first one is something that in general is an important no uh, note, that the return type me uh, means a lot when we use coroutines. And okay, so let me uh, go see my, my talk uh, to understand uh, how deep it, it goes. But uh, uh, when, we, when you read or watch other materials about uh, coroutines, 
some of them don't, don't make this distinction between how we actually use coroutines day to day, which should be the easiest part to teach uh, uh, our students. And the, uh, the more lower level uh, layers of uh, this feature, uh, how to write a new library type, or what the compiler does with our, with our code when we write a coroutine. Uh, so it's important to not, to, to not uh, mix all this uh, together uh, so, and don't, don't confuse the students. Contracts, contracts is a better assert okay, uh, and explicitly we, uh, we say explicitly what we uh, expect from the caller and what the caller can expect from us. Uh, so till now uh, we just uh, documented it or I, I expected the, the, the user to understand it from, a, from the name of the variable or the name of the function. And now we can say, say it explicitly. So if we have a queue that and a operation to push a new item to the queue, we can say that we expect the, the queue isn't full. Otherwise, you can't push into it. And Afterwards, you can be sure that the queue isn't empty because at least one new item is there. And you, uh, we can use assert inside it because maybe we have uh, some uh, 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 internal validation uh, function to, to check that everything is uh, in place. So this is uh, the way we use it. And uh, as I said, C++ 20 is still in, is changing. So on the last meeting uh, of the committee happened in Kona uh, last uh, February, they changed the naming. So it, instead of expect and ensures, now it's pre and post. Probably easier to remember. And, uh, okay, too many details, sorry. Uh, I will just skip it. Okay, more changes. One of them is about auto. And when uh, Amir mentioned in his talk that C++11 is done and we know what uh, it includes, no, C++11 <laughs> still changes. Sometimes when we find a, a defect report, when we find a bug that the committee decides it was fixing the, it even in previous uh, standards. So this li line of code is uh, part of the reason why people uh, didn't like auto and part of the reason for the almost always auto why just almost? So this is one of the reasons, because auto A, and when we use curly braces here, it's initializer list, because this, is a, uh, this was m maybe more obvious, but the user may probably expected it to be int, uh, but it was initializer list of int, but this is fixed in C++17 and even back. When the first one is on error now, and compiler implemented it already, even in a C++11 mode. And, but now, now we have to, to say almost always equal sign, maybe, because the equal sign can do funny things. I don't know. Uh, Structure bindings, here is the first use of Tony table. So if you have a tuple, again, a new addition to C++11 is like a, a normal, uh, like pair, we know, but tuple can, 
can, uh, is not uh, only for two types. It can, it can have uh, more than, uh, multiple uh, multiple uh, variables inside it. So how we use the tuple, we, uh, there is std get, and we ask for the first, uh, the first uh, value from it, and the second one, so it's zero based, of course, or we use std tie, but now we need uh, to declare i and s beforehand, before, uh, before we can give it to func, uh, to tie. And with C++ 17, it's just auto. Now it's, it's, almost, uh, it's always auto. You, uh, you can't put the type of the tuple here. It must be auto. And it just declare the i and s and open the, unwrap the tuple and put the, the values right uh, there in i and s. And it works for structs, it, for, it works for arrays, and there is a way to enable it for our own types. And, okay, this is... Another change is select, uh, selection statements with initializer. With, with uh, for example, if, but it uh, works for switch too. Okay. Uh, we have to initialize the, uh, the variable first before we check uh, the condition. And w if we want it to be in this, in the just in the scope of the if, we had to just introduce an artificial, artificial scope, and with C++ 17, we can write it like this. Okay, so we, uh, all our students uh, uh, get frustrated by the compiler errors they get when they start using templates, uh, probably even us. Uh, so <coughs> concepts solve, uh, solves it eventually, uh, and here is how we constraint our template. We, we can still write type name T, but now we can, say, uh, we can mention explicitly what our requirements from this type is. It, it's not just any T. It's, uh, this T must be incrementable or de decrementable. Uh, or not all, uh, end. And there is a shorter no notation. We can just replace the type name or class with the concept name and say that this T must be swappable. Okay? Uh, so compilation errors probably will be much better because now they will be in the color side and instead of deep inside the implementation, where we try to use uh, an operation that is not allowed on this T. Um, there is even shorter notation. We, can, we don't have to, to use the word template anymore. We can, uh, if this is a normal function, uh, uh, so this is not a normal function am anymore. This is a template because it uses a concept, but we still can tell that this is a this is a generic function because we have the auto here. So this is the the way we we say B is not a type because just compare it. Here we use swappable T, so T is a type that and with the requirement to be swappable. But here, it's integral auto b, so b is a new variable, in this, in this case, a parameter, with, with the requirement to be of the type uh, 
that is integral. And the same can be used to declare new variables, etc., etc. And how we create a new concept? It can be very simple, just concept and uh, equal and the boole uh, Boolean uh, condition we, we want. Uh, if we want something more, more uh, complicated, we can uh, use this uh, requires. And uh, uh, so it's like asking, is the, uh, does this expression compiles? If it compiles, OK. If not, this is not the type we are looking for. And even to ask if this type has inside it another type, um, nested classes, etc. And the new overloading rules, because we don't have enough of them. You know, we have normal overloading of functions. We have overloading of catch, because uh, we, we, it just tries the, them uh, one after another. And if the base class appears before the, deri the derived class, uh, it selects the base class uh, case. And selection of specializa template specializa specializ specialization. Sorry, my, my <coughs> mouth is dry already. <laughs> Yeah, whatever you said. Uh, thanks. Uh, so now we have another set. When we have multiple functions that uh, uh, like a, a, a sort of overloading, but each one with different concept. So you are all excited to learn the new, uh, new set of rules. Uh, fortunately, the, the rules are simple and can be they described in, uh, in, one, in one simple uh, sentence, because uh, probably to make it simple for the compiler, but uh, it works for, uh, for us to, uh, too. So concept C2, uh, okay, okay, uh, too formal. Uh, the, the interesting point is here. We have one concept. Hmm? In some sense. Uh, so, uh, so now, uh, okay, ja uh, le let's go to, to the case that it works. And uh, so we have decrementable, the concept that uh, asks uh, the operator uh, minus minus to, to works. And we have reverse iterator that uh, uh, asks uh, it to be on iterator two. So we can uh, access the value it, point, uh, it uh, points to. And uh, now, we if we have a function that takes decrementable and function that takes reverse iterator, and we pass something that uh, is a reverse iterator, the compiler knows to select this one because it knows that this one is decrementable with some additional requirements. If we write here explicitly requires a, a minus minus t, it doesn't work. Or at least it's not a, a, we don't expect the compilers to, to make it work. Because uh, uh, the compiler uh, is, isn't required to, to compare the expressions and uh, understand that uh, uh, n Less, less than or equal zero uh, means that uh, also n is less than zero, for example. Uh, it, the only requirement for the compiler is to, to find these cases when one concept uses another one and adds more requirements. And so this, uh, it, uh, it will select the, the correct uh, overloading. And uh, if we, uh, if uh, if this isn't the case, so in, in, if you uh, depends if the concepts are very different. If you have a concept that uh, takes only integral types, 
and a concept that takes uh, only floating point types. So no issue because uh, uh, it's like uh, all uh, uh, the normal overloadings we, we used to because uh, if you pass a floating point, it, it, only one uh, overloading is relevant, so it's fine. If more than one, than one uh, can be selected, so it's ambiguous and a uh, compilation error. Okay, uh, I think this is time. Thank you. No? Oh, Questions? Okay. Yeah. After hearing yesterday, especially, I think in C17, there's two things which are good for us. That in Lambda expressions, you have star this. That's yes. That's important. In templates, you can have auto. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. So. With C17, there was uh, uh, already a week, uh, like uh, the first uh, the first drop of uh, concepts. So we can uh, use auto. So no, uh, the concept that doesn't constrains uh, constrains anything, but uh, it means that uh, in, in, uh, when we want a non-type parameter, we like in this case, we pass the type and a value, a con uh, which must be a context. Huh? And now we don't, we don't have to specify the, the value explicitly because the compiler know how to deduce it. Uh, okay, better error, uh, error uh, compilation, uh, compilation, better compilation errors <laughs> uh, a, a huge, but uh, it also works uh, if uh, anyone, uh, how many of, uh, of you heard the, the Sfine? Sfine? Okay. En enable leaf? Okay, same people. <laughs> so, okay, so for the lucky of us that don't know Sfine or uh, enable if, okay, maybe not much. <laughs> but uh, uh, whoever uh, ho uh, whoever had to, to write something with uh, enable if, uh, et cetera, now it's much more simple because uh, concepts uh, replace this, uh, this concept. Would uh, it uh, reduce compilation time also? Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, because it yeah, can, it because can uh, know the actual type that we are, we are aiming for. Um, <laughs> or at least, yeah, the resolution, it, it can skip uh, types that do not match. It's, uh, it's probably the, uh, uh, if when comparing to normal function or when comparing to enable if. When comparing to other, uh, like for example, uh, enable if. For enable if. Uh, Probably yes, because uh, enable if was a template metaprogramming trick. So comp uh, 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 it required to, the compiler to do much more work uh, usually. So probably it, uh, it will be also better compilation time for temp tem heavily templated uh, uh, code. But uh, for normal functions, uh, it, it may, uh, it's the other way. Because uh, now, instead of normal function, you have a, a template. So, okay. Okay. Thank you.